Are you gonna be watching? Today is the day my uncle put me in charge of everything. Today is the day that everyone's gonna see a star athlete be born. I got my boy Air with me today. Yeah. He's a soccer expert. And we're gonna kick the ball around and have some fun. Aren't we supposed to do an experiment? Yeah, yeah. Heads up, little dude. Oh, yeah, go get it. Well, Zoe, I hope you realize we can't trust you with anything as important as you've been doing. JD will be running the experiment this week. In the meantime, I need you to take care of these for me. What are we supposed to do with all this stuff? Mail them. Oh, and I need them organized and arranged according to the texture of the paper and the taste of the ink. Taste of the ink? If you're not serious about keeping your job here, Fine. well... I'll do it. Oh, of course, those are just the inventories for the rest of these. Seriously? Oh, must be from JD. So, uh, how's that one puppy doing? Oh, uh, we reversed the formula and someone took it home. Have you guys done any more experiments? I don't know. Zoe usually does the experiments. But you know what? I get to do the experiments from now on, because today, the professor put me in charge. Yep. Anyway, hey, let's play some soccer. Shouldn't we warm up first? Uh, you can, but I'm not gonna warm up. I'm gonna just go play, because I'm a tough guy. Woohoo! Yes, oh! Ah! 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 Nobody panic. I'm fine. Medic! No, no, dude, I'm good. I'm fine. All right, fine, uh, then give me your phone. Oh, here. Ooh. No, I'm good, though, I'm good, I'm good. You don't need to call him. I'm okay. Hey, Aaron, I saw what happened. Is JD okay? That looked like it hurt. Yeah, he says it's fine, but it looks pretty bad to me. No, I'm good. Okay, well, make sure he's taken care of. I gotta go, someone's here. Ah. Good. Okay. Hi, you must be Zoe. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Dr. Olaf. Just call me Dr. Jones. Okay. So, you are a foot and ankle doctor. That's correct. Basically, what I am is I'm a doctor that spends all my time just treating problems of the foot and the ankle. So, what do you do for them? Well, the main thing we do is we try to take care of injuries when, ha when they happen. Sometimes people will have an injury, like they'll fall down and they'll sprain something or they'll break something. Sometimes people get what we call overuse injuries, and that's just people overdoing things. So we try to do it, spend a lot of time getting people better, and we spend a lot of time getting people doing better before they even get injured. It sounds kind of strange, but the best thing to do is to prevent the injuries from happening in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then do you ever have them do any exercises to get them better or anything like that? Yeah, so a lot of times the best way to prevent injuries is to have them do some, some preventative exercises, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of different things that we do. Okay, what types of injuries do you treat most often? One of the things I treat a lot are ankle sprains. That happens mm -hmm. all the time. You probably, yeah. <laughs> have you ever sprained your ankle? Yes. Yeah, well, I see a lot, a lot of kids and adults that, that sprain their ankle, and that, that really can, can be one of the common things that we see. How do you treat ankle sprains? Well, there's a, there's a principle that we do. The first thing we do is we rest it. Mm -hmm. So when, we, when you injure something, it makes sense that you want to get off of it. So we have people get off of the ankle, get off of the foot that, that they've injured. Yeah. And then the very next thing you want to do is put ice on it. You mm -hmm. know why we put ice on it? Reduce swelling. Exactly. So, so what you want to do is you want to, you want to rest it, you want to put ice on it. And the other way you reduce swelling is you put compression mm -hmm. on it. And then the last thing is you want to elevate it. You want to elevate it above your heart because the blood pulls down into your foot. Mm -hmm. So if you keep your, your ankle down, it will swell up. If you elevate it, then you get rid of the swelling. Mm -hmm. After somebody gets hurt, mm -hmm. the best thing to do is to prevent those injuries from happening in the mm -hmm. first place. I bet. So how can you do that? 
Well, there's a lot of simple things we can do. We can do some stretching exercises. Um, so what happens is the ligament connects the bone to the bone, but the muscle is really what, what gets the joints moving. Like if you sprain your ankle, yeah. it's, it's actually the muscles around there that, mm -hmm. that give it the strength. So the more you can strengthen the joint, strengthen the muscles, then the less likely you are to get injury. Uh, the other thing we want to do is stretch them because when, when things are tight, then, then you're more likely to get injured. So we do a lot of, a lot of uh, stretching exercises as well. And then one of the other things that's really important was we teach people how to remap their nerves and, and get the nerves talking to the muscles to protect the joints in the first place. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a situation where you were maybe walking and you didn't realize there was a little little and your foot uneven and it turns? Yep. But what happens is, is you have this awareness and a lot of times you'll correct yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's because your ner nerves are mapping really well with your muscles yeah. and that's how you prevent injuries. And we teach, wow. teach people how to do that. Cool. So if people just follow those rules, then you'd have a lot less injuries to deal with, right? Exactly. So have you come up with a hypothesis? Preventative medicine is one of the best ways to keep from getting hurt, am I right? That is exactly right, and that is an excellent hypothesis. Why, thank you. I have many more questions for you, but I need to see if I can put this on hold first, so I will be right back. Okay. everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Well, I guess the professor's busy. So anyways, when did you first decide to be a doctor of podiatric medicine? Well, it happened a long time ago and there were two things that probably sparked my interest. One was growing up, I, I grew up, my dad had a shoe store, so oh, cool. I was, always spent time around shoes and in the store and saw a lot of people have problems with their feet. And the other thing was I was always a tomboy. I was one of these <laughs> girls that just liked to run around, climb trees and be active. So mm -hmm. I decided to combine those two interests, taking care of sports injuries and, and taking care of feet. Right, so now you're mainly a foot and ankle specialist. That's exactly right. Right. So are there other ways to become involved in sports medicine besides being a doctor like yourself? That's a great question. There are so many ways that you can get involved. Um, there's different things you can you, you can be the athletic trainer that works with a team. Mm -hmm. And the trainers are the first ones that get called the action when there's an injury on the field. So if mm -hmm. there's a game and somebody falls down, the trainer's the one that sees that. There's physical therapists. They're the ones who take care of the injuries after I see them. We prescribe physical therapy a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a medical assistance. There's all kinds of ways you can get involved. Well, it sounds like a very interesting career path. So how have you used your knowledge in this to get involved with the community? 
One of the things that I've done with, uh, I don't know if you've ever played soccer, but, mm, I, but uh, <laughs> I partner with Brandy Chastain, who's one of the oh, wow. uh, World Cup and Olympic champion, and I was one of the team doctors when she played soccer here in San Jose. Oh, cool. And, uh, we'd, and Brandy and I got together and we decided a way that we're going to inspire young girls is we're going to create mm -hmm. a foundation, and we call it the Reach Up Foundation to help inspire young girls to reach up for their dreams, to make healthy lifestyle choices, to be strong, to be brave, and to and to uh, do anything they want to uh, fulfill their dreams. Yeah, that sounds like a really cool um, organization. You know what? It's too bad you weren't at the soccer field today because, from the looks of it, my friend JD hurt his ankle. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I can still help him. Why don't you tell him to come by my office later today, and I'll take a look at him. That would be great. Thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. heard from JD? I want to know how his field experiment is going. You didn't hear? JD hurt his ankle playing soccer. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully there was someone there to administer first aid. You know, first aid is a very important skill to have in the event of an injury. Uh, the idea of first aid is a very old one. There are some basic things that anyone can do to help someone while waiting for help to arrive. The main rule is first, do no harm. A lot of times you can act hastily and turn a bad situation into a tragedy. Uh, yeah. First try to talk to a person and see if they're coherent or if they're out of it. If they're out of it, they may be suffering from shock. If someone bumped their head, keep talking to them and don't let them lie down or go to sleep. That can be very bad. Yeah. You know, if someone is bleeding, find something sterile and apply direct pressure to the wound. Mm -hmm. They don't want to, you know, you don't want them to lose too much blood because then they're really going to be out of it. Now, if someone's been stabbed with something, don't try to take it out because this can increase the blood flow and losing yeah. is bad. Now, if someone has maybe had a nasty fall or hurt their head or their neck, the best thing to try to do is keep them still. Don't move them. That can make mm -hmm. the injury a lot worse. A lot worse. Best thing to do is stay with them and tell them everything's going to be okay. And call 911 as soon as you're able. Uh, now, if, they're, if you can't get to 911 and they're in a really bad situation, you may have to administer CPR. Now, the best way to learn this is to take the class from the American of the Red, Red Cross. Yeah, exactly. Get your certification from the American Red Cross because it's mm -hmm. kind of complicated. But basically, cardiopulmonary resuscitation is what CPR stands for, and it's just yeah. trying to artificially keep the heart going and the lungs functioning so that the blood and the oxygen mm -hmm. circulates through the body. First thing to do, again, send for help, because this is serious business. Uh, listen to their mouth and see if they're breathing. Mm -hmm. And if you can hear their breathing and you can see their chest moving, that's a good thing. Breathing is... Important. Yes, very. <laughs> Next, <laughs> check for a pulse, and you can check on the wrist or check on the mm -hmm. neck. Uh, if they're breathing, of course, they're gonna have a pulse. If they're not breathing, uh, don't bother checking for pulse. Put your hands on the victim's chest and push down 30 times. You can lock your hands and repeat this for as long as you can or until the ambulance arrives or other help. This puts oxygen into the lungs. And believe it or not, this is enough to keep people alive for quite a while, even if their heart has stopped beating. And thousands of people's lives have been saved just this way. Oh, wow. So you can actually, like, make their heart work again, pretty much. Yeah. You can do what they can. Oh, incoming field report. I'm fine. Hi there. Hi. You JD? Yes. Hi, I'm Dr. Olaf. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. And, and who are you? Uh, I'm his friend Aaron. Aaron, nice to meet you, Aaron. Nice to meet you. So tell me what happened. Uh, it's nothing much. I mean, I just tripped. I hurt my ankle a little bit. Didn't hurt that bad, though. Okay. I'm fine. So you're kind of shaking your head. It, was, it, was it worse than he's saying? I think it is. Okay. So tell me what happened, JD. Well, I was kicking the ball around, right? And there's this ditch. I didn't see it. And I guess I tripped over the ditch. Okay, and when you tripped over it, did your 
ankle turn this way, kind of turn inward? Yeah. Okay. Were you able to walk on it afterwards? Yeah, I could walk. No? Not so no, much, Aaron, huh? Very well. Okay, did you have to help him off the field? I did. Okay, so it, was, it hurt pretty bad then, didn't it, JD? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, okay. So, so tell me if you could point with one finger where it hurts the most. What ah, would you say? Like right around that. Right area. down there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just look at a couple of different areas, okay? And I'll be real gentle, but you tell me where it hurts and where it doesn't yet hurt. And we'll go over everything, okay? Okay. Fine. Now I'm just going to move things around a little bit, okay? Okay. And if I just go straight up and down. How does that feel? Not too bad? Not too bad. Okay. And how about if I turn it in oh, here, a little more oh, that way, huh? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to just relax your foot. I'm going to see if I can move. Not too bad. It doesn't move too much a little bit, but not too bad. Okay, so let me explain to you what we check for when we look at your ankle, okay? Okay. Um, there's both soft tissue and there's bone around your ankle. And where two bones to get, come together, that's where the joint is. So we look at some of the structures in the joint. We look at the bones, and we look at the ligaments and the tendons that go around them. And let me show you a little diagram here, okay? So ankle sprains are very, very common, okay? So let me show you what happens when you have an ankle sprain. So I'll try not to bore you too much. I'm just going to give you a short little anatomy lesson, okay. okay? So there are three main ligaments around the ankle. Okay, there's a, a ligament in the front of the ankle, mm -hmm. there's a ligament in the side of the ankle, and there's a ligament in the back of the ankle. Okay, so ligaments are soft tissue and they connect bone to bone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what keeps your bones together so they don't just kind of wobble around. So they keep them nice and stable. Okay, then going around the, the bone itself is a tendon which comes from muscle and that goes all the way down to bone. So muscle to bone is, is tendon, yeah. bone to bone is ligament, okay? So the ligament is the first line of defense that your body has when your ankle turns. So it's trying to turn, and then the ligament will tighten up. So what happens when you, when you have a sprain of the ligament, you'll stretch it, and then if that motion keeps happening, you'll actually tear the ligament. We want to figure out what it is that you injured and how to get you back on the field as quickly as possible. Hmm. Does that sound like a good plan? Sounds like a good plan. What do you think, Aaron? Sounds good. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Up to 40% of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov slash business. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds.
the x-rays and there are no broken bones. So, so that's really good news, okay? Good. You've stretched that ligament, but it's not badly torn, no broken bones. So I'm gonna show you what we do. Ah, freezing, yes. okay. Ah. All right, we're gonna wrap it right up. We're gonna get your crutches back. Ah. <laughs> oh, JD, are you okay? That looked like it really hurt. Nah, I'm fine. Echo's making noise like a firecracker all the time. Well, I think you should get some rest because if you get hurt too badly, then you're not gonna be able to do any lab work. Look, my leg is perfectly okay. See? Oh! Sir JD hurt himself. JD, that, that could be a serious injury. Maybe we should go over some basic first aid, Zoe. Hello? It's been long overdue since I checked my first aid kit for here at the lab. So let's take a look at it. Okay. Well, okay. First thing we've got to have is bandages. Obviously, if you cut yourself, burn yourself. What? We've got a trauma pad and a sterile trauma gauze pad. pad. Yeah, a trauma pad. That's a, it just is a little bit thicker and a little bit more blood proof. So you could apply direct pressure to stop bleeding. And of course, a roll of gauze, which if you don't have any tape, can be used to wrap around a, a dressing and, and hold it on the body. Now, uh, JD has a probably a musculature or ligament injury to his ankle. So he's gonna need some heating pad. This heat increases the circulation in the wound area and facilitates healing. He'll also probably want some muscle and joint cream, which is essentially just a menthol rub. It's the opposite of the, the hot, it's the cold, and it constricts the flow of blood, uh, which is also useful in a trauma situation. And of course, the littlest Band of all bandages, yes, the Band-Aid, the adhesive strip, if you will, uh, which, you would not think is very important, but in a crisis situation, uh, the tiniest nick can result in a serious infection, and that can lead to blood poisoning and death, or amputation, gangrene, all sorts of awful things. But with a Band-Aid and a little antibiotic cream, that will seriously reduce your chances of something falling off. Uh, of course, not all wounds and dressings fit, so scissors. Very good. Also can be used to cut open a wound if you need to extract okay, any. Okay, moving on. Oh, what, does this make you squeamish a bit? Just a little bit. Oh, well, you can't be uncomfortable with the, you know, the, the human innards and outards and whatnot. That's, a, that's what you gotta do to, to fix someone. It's just, yeah, it's just like the working on your car. You know, but a little gooier. Um, antibiotics. No, we don't have any. We just have the cream, so we'll need to get some more of those. Burn cream, very good. Sunburns, soldering iron burns. I can't even count the numbers of the. That's why I only have two left. Bloody soldering iron burns. Uh, ibuprofen, pain reliever, anti-inflammatory, and fever reducer. If someone gets an infection, they will get a fever, and you'll need that. Now, also, when you get an infection, your body tries to fight it off by, oh, Yes, producing a nice thick coating of mucus and phlegm. And uh, sometimes it gets so bad you can't breathe, and that's usually a bad thing. Breathing is important. It, so, it's good to, to be able to breathe. So this yeah. is an antihistamine uh, that reduces your body's allergic oh, reaction. So like an allergy pill. Yeah, 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 kind of. Um, a sort of general purpose allergy pill. If you have a specific allergy, uh, this probably be enough. Then you'll need an EpiPen, which we also don't have and we need to replace. Uh, EpiPen, like when you have to stab it into your... Yes, exactly, and because the person starts to swell up and turn... Mm. I would stay away from bees' nests myself. Yeah. I <laughs> learned that the hard way. Uh, new skin. For a serious cut, what I you're going to need to do is close the wound. That's yeah, sort of like super glue. Super glue? Oh yeah, super glue was originally invented as a as a medical treatment uh, for deep cuts. You just squirt some super glue in, hold it shut, then apply pressure to stop the bleeding and. Uh, no way. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Check it out. Yeah, it's a bottle. Super glue. And of course, it's good to keep all of this in water. Oh, I almost forgot my favorite, my favorite tool. Tweezers. 
tweezers. The humble, tiny tweezer, which can yield mighty results in the war on, on injury and sickness. I once extracted a, uh, well, I, I don't know how else to say it, a, a large grub uh, from a man's nose in the Australian outback. I was down there, you know, doing some stuff, and then he got, uh, things happen in the outback, what can you say? And so this can really easily get right up well, you get the idea. Um, very good. And it should all be held in watertight bags in case of a tsunami or a flood, maybe one of the ceiling mains bursts, sprinkler pipes, sewage, who knows. And last but not least, you put it all in this handy dandy plastic tub, which also has a watertight seal. And the main thing to remember is, while we don't have every supply we would like, mm -hmm. It's better to have some supplies that you know where they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then, then nothing. Exactly. Or a lot of supplies that you can't get to. Like if you got a big suitcase and it's in your closet, it doesn't do you a lot of good if you're in your car. <laughs> ah, our first patient. <gasps> wow, can I see it? Is it gross? No, no, no. It's fine. Well, I guess we'll have to postpone your experiment. Professor, wait. I don't think I could do another experiment. In fact, I don't think I should be doing any experiments at all. But it's what you always wanted. Yeah, but I'm terrible at it. Besides, everything worked out when you were in charge. And when you saw that I was hurt, you were worried about me instead of mad that I tried to take your job. Professor, she deserves this. Do you really think so? I'm positive. Now, who's hungry? <laughs> well, you gotta eat. Today I played some soccer, I was pretty good too Till I fell over a ditch that happened to catch my shoe And I felt so much pain, I didn't know what to do I kept saying, I'm alright, but they all knew it wasn't true I could hardly walk and I had to go to dark Cause I heard my ankle pop and I know it was a shock But my injury was minor, she showed me on a picture She taught me what to do if somebody ever got injured If I ever, 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 ever do it again I gotta exercise and do everything that she said Rotating, stretching, balancing, stability training will help with injuries, pops, and the hurting and straining, huh? <laughs> <laughs>